Imagine if artificial intelligence could predict the major events that are gonna happen in our lives in the future, somewhat like a weather forecast, but with better accuracy, right? That might sound like something that's right out of a sci-fi film, but it is not. This is a tool that now exists in the world right now. I'm diving into something super cool and honestly a bit mind blowing. So you know how we can tell stories by stringing together letters into words, words into sentences, sentences into paragraphs, etc. Well, it turns out that our lives can be seen sort of in a similar way. So you can think of the letters as more of an event that happens in your life, and then you can build them into a certain order which tells a certain story for each person. So just like the way that we can build these large language models like ChatGPT using tokens, which are word phrases, you can essentially do the same thing, but with life events and the attention mechanism that's flipping the pages. And in the same way that ChatGPT can do next token prediction, this kind of a model when applied to events in life can make a prediction about what the next life event for you specifically is going to be. So today I want to talk to you about this paper. It's called Using Sequences of Life Events to Predict Human Lives. They trained a model, but instead of using words, instead of using tokens, they're using milestones, life milestones. So things like when you were born, where you went to school, when you changed jobs, and they're looking at it across a huge data set of an entire population. And they did this at scale thanks to the fact that it was sponsored by the country of Denmark. Denmark has socialized medicine, so they actually have this huge national corpus of data about the six million people who live there. And along with other government records, it covers where they were born, how many years they've been alive for, where they work, where they live, how their health has been, even how much money they earned throughout their lives. And it was all recorded with incredible precision. So this new model, Life to Vec, especially for Danish people, can make incredible predictions about what's next for their future, including the thing that we all sort of spend our whole lives trying not to think about, mortality. When are you going to die? Ugh, sometimes this AI stuff is just getting too real. But there's more to this paper too, because it's not just that they proved it was possible, they also sort of hunted around inside the vector space to try to figure out why it is that some things are correlated. What kind of insights is there that we can use to understand the risk we have in life? And even though it doesn't seem like anything really conclusive came from that research, they did learn a little bit about how things are correlated and that's a totally open line of research in the future. So hopefully people can get into this data source and figure out what it is that's making these life events the way they are and figure out ways to guide an entire population towards a better world. Now, if you're wondering why did they call it the life to vec model, it's because it's life to vector form. So in the same way ChatGPT, a large language model takes word phrases that we call tokens, converts them into vectors because vectors are easy for computers to understand. You can do angle mathematics on them, and that's how you translate from the input to the output. This system translates the input of life into a vector space so that you can do some kind of a calculation on it and get an output. And it showed that it had some really interesting predictions, including minute details about people's personalities that it was getting pretty accurate a lot of the time. Just the concept of turning this stuff into an embedding, getting a job, moving to a new city, getting a health diagnosis, these have just become abstract points in a multi-dimensional space. And yet that makes all the difference in prediction. For example, if it can look at a series of life events for somebody far enough back, it can pretty much accurately describe if they're going to die in the next four years or not. So there's something fascinating about the sequential nature of how words are written and how you read a sentence and it starts to build into a, some kind of a momentum and there's some sort of pattern in the way that these are normally written so that you can make accurate predictions in the future. And before transformers were all the rage, we used to have something called a recurrent neural network that used to sort of think like that, like discounting things that are further away, but kind of moving up steps and remembering the most current steps with much more high value than the other, and then trying to bring some of that information up step by step. But a new project called Time GPT is being trained only on sequential data, and that is making it so that you get much more sequential outputs. So this is the paper, it's just called Time GPT-1, and it introduced a model that has a more generalized sense of time and how time will play out in the future. So whether it's trying to figure out tomorrow's weather or future stock trends, this is the system to look at. So Time GPT is a foundation model, the big expensive models that you build on top of the kind of platform models, and it's specifically designed for time series forecasting. And you can think of time series data as simply data points that are in order like daily temperature or monthly sales figures or something that happens over time. Now, TimeGPT is built on a similar attention mechanism in the same way ChatGPT is. And as clearly proven by how much investment and success these kind of models have had, they're great at understanding sequences because they know in a long sequence exactly what to give attention to. They learn 
how to give the right attention to the right part of the sequence. That is why Time GPT and Life to Vec seem like special models that might actually have a lot of predictive power in new ways. Like imagine you run a business and you just wanna know how many uh, like widgets or products you're gonna sell next month. So normally you would you know, extrapolate something, maybe run a regression, but having an actually intelligent AI system that really understands the nature of sequential data and you plug your question in with a little bit of an example, maybe one or two shot learning, you could get all sorts of interesting predictions that might be highly accurate. Time GPT might become a Swiss army knife of time-centric data. Now what makes Life to Vec so special is that data set. The fact that they got the Danish government to help them train this model with really unique life events. And what makes Time GPT special also is that it's an incredible data set. Now it's not a one trick pony, it's trying to just learn the nature of sequential data so it has a hundred billion time series data points. And they come from a bunch of different fields, so finance, healthcare, weather, and a bunch of others. Making it a great foundation model for all sorts of people who might wanna just make a prediction. And I find this really interesting. I might just be coming off a video that came out a couple weeks ago where I actually talked about the idea of having free will and if AI systems in the future are gonna accurately predict everything we're gonna say. So this is fresh in my mind, but this research is really starting to make me see how a system like that might be closer than it felt like it was just a couple weeks ago when I made that video. I mean, a system like Time GPT, but say a million times bigger with a million times more sequential data input for training, I don't see why it wouldn't be able to predict anything that's coming next. And the way that Google's new Gemini model was multimodal, it was trained on audio and video and text all at the same time. If we can do sequential data that's also the frames of a movie, that's also a panning camera, that's also somebody talking over time in a multimodal way, what is that gonna lead to? I think that might lead to a future where a system can see your face, can understand what you're saying, can hear and translate what you're saying into text and make some incredibly accurate predictions about exactly who you are and what you're going to say next. Don't know if that's good or bad. Honestly, it's probably bad, except for times when we use it to find out that people are gonna do bad things and we stop them from doing it beforehand, which will happen, which will be good. But then also like, there's no freedom at all kind of in the world, which is freaky. But I guess that's up to us to deploy these things in ways that citizens are happy with and use it for its benefits and not for its overly bearing control factors. But I think superhuman prediction has clearly got a path forward now. But luckily for me, based on the sequence of events that you've taken to get to this point, there's a 12% chance that you are gonna click that subscribe button. So help me get to my next goal, 9,000 subscribers. I would love it if you click that button. We'll see you in the next video.